everybody, DM Jim here, and welcome to the latest episode of the Tabletop Engineer. You know, back when I started this channel during the first year, I made a, I did a project, this one right here, called the Goblin Watchtower. I'll put a link right here for you. Um, this is one of my favorite pieces of terrain that I've ever made, mainly because I was just so happy with how the aged look of it turned out, and also sort of the clutched together look, like you would expect goblins to do. See that? So anyway, for some time now, I've been wanting to revisit my goblin watchtower and expand it a little bit. So in this episode, we're going to get to the table, and I'm going to show you how I made this. I began this project by just hot gluing uh, some lengths of skewers onto a piece of chipboard. There really is no method here. It's just glue it together to create a skeleton. And it's got, you know, you want it to lean a little bit. You want it to look a little crooked in places. And then basically you just cut up little snippets of chipboard. The chipboard are supposed to act as planks. So you want them cut in many different lengths and varied thicknesses, wavy lines, straight lines, that kind of thing. And then just go crazy, glue them all over uh, every you know structure you can find. Uh, make them look like walls, uh, places for for goblins to hide behind. Uh, I built a tower here, as you can see. I just uh, up above, I I put a floor and then I put some rails around it. Again, everything I cut here is just random lengths and thicknesses to give it just a you know a really haphazard thrown together look. Now, once you're done gluing all of the structure up, I created a set of doors. You could leave it open uh, without any doors on front, but I wanted some doors uh, that the goblins could use to keep people from entering. And I glued those in, and then basically I just added, I just kept adding to it until I was pleased with it. I added cross pieces. Here you can see I added some string. I would place a little hot glue on one end, wrap it around various poles, and I just kept going and I made it look random as if it was holding the structure together somewhat, the, the string serving as rope. Once you're happy with it, you know, black bomb it. I did not, uh, I didn't have time to spray paint because it's so cold here it would take forever for it to dry. So I painted it with craft paint and then I hit it with burnt sienna and some light gray to give the wood that sun weathered look. Once that structure was complete, I covered the base with glue. I used tacky glue and then just some sand to, uh, to cover it up. And this was to match my previous goblin tower. Very, very simple. The only thing in this is chipboard, uh, wood dowels and toothpicks, string, and the sand that I used to cover the ground. I'm really liking this. It goes well with this piece. I may darken it a little bit with a wash. I haven't decided yet, but this is not the end of my goblin uh, fortress. I'm going to be doing some more down the road, but uh, I hope you like it. This is something that even if you're not comfortable making terrain, <laughs> part of the success in making this is that <laughs> the mistakes look like goblin mistakes. You know, um, you don't have to be perfect here. It's gonna lean, it's gonna be messed up, the The wood is horrible, the paint job doesn't have to be good. You know, I, I, I painted it black and then I just went over it real, real uh, quick, burnt sienna, and then a light gray uh, dry coat and uh, dry brushing. And you get this consistent look um, right here. A few, a few things I, I should mention. I used hot glue on this one. On this one, I used tacky glue. The hot glue I found, you know, lets you go a little bit quicker. I was worried when I made this one that the hot glue would be visible, and I'm quite, quite pleased that it's not visible here. The strings were a nice touch. Um, they look like rope, especially if you examine them close and I put red blood on the tips of all the sharp, sharp items here. And uh, all in all, I'm quite pleased with it. So this is something you could totally do. Total time, including painting, 
and the sand and everything, this took less than two hours. I mean, it really was not a hard one to do. But uh, I'm kind of hooked now, so I want to keep going and see what I can do next. So there you go. I'll include some close-up photos at the end of the video. I hope you like this, and uh, stay tuned for more crafting videos. Uh, I would like to remind you I'm releasing my first issue of Bexham's Bazaar, which is a new gamer gaming magazine. I call it the Gaming Crafter Magazine. It's going to have how-tos in it, but it's going to have a lot of stuff for just GMs and players who play all kinds of games. I really hope uh, you'll take a look at it. I'll put some links below where you can go download issue number zero, which is totally free, and you can kind of see what the uh, issue is gonna look like or what the magazine is gonna look like. Issue number zero only has about 35 pages, give or take. Issue number one is gonna have over, well, right now it's looking like it's gonna have closer to 80 pages. Um, about 10 or 15 pages are advertisements, so you get the idea, it's expanding. But uh, if you like what you see, I welcome you to come subscribe to the magazine. It's only going to be $2 a month. You can subscribe on Patreon. If you don't like it, you can cancel whenever. Uh, you don't have to pay a year in advance. So just $2 a month and you, you'll get the magazine along with all other subscribers uh, on the first of the month in digital format. And I'm also working on making a print version available on DriveThruRPG. So stay tuned for more news on that. Thank you for your time. I hope you like this project. This is DM Jim, and I will see you next week for another How-To Friday. Take care.